tend to be a fairly house museum oriented type of organization. Did you invite them today? <laughs> we, got the, we got the memo. <laughs> this is where we, when these things come up, we say to ourselves in our office, uh, we quote Jane Jacobs, progress happens one funeral at a time. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, <laughs> sometimes. Yeah, maybe <laughs> ours. <laughs> sometimes you just have to wait till that bureaucrat retires and the young person comes in. We've seen that happen too. But the new generation understands this better than my generation does. So that the new generation is more comfortable with diversity and uncertainty than my generation is. Uh, so sometimes you just have to have the discussion, keep the thing alive, and then the circumstances will coalesce around But But to this point, um, and the joke, did we invite them? Of course you did, but they chose not to come. Um, clearly, they need to be integrated fully into the conversation, even at this level. And you have to figure out some way to get them involved, because they're not here, you know? Um, and how how that could best be achieved is if you had a good vision. If you could convince them, maybe they don't like necessarily the result of it, but the vision makes a lot of sound sense. I don't know these people, but I do know preservationists. <laughs> I assume Canadian preservationists are similar to American preservationists. Especially the bureaucrats. Yeah. yeah. The healthcare guys. I mean, calling the SHPO office is is a nightmare in New York State. We deal with them every single day. I, did I say we like conflict? Yeah. 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 Can I can I defend the trust? I work for a bureaucracy, and I actually have had a lot of support in that job from the trust. Um, I think we've got a demographic shift going on to the, the first quote of the day: time and place, place and time. Um, we have a new generation who's actually kind of excited that we're looking at things um, a little differently. And, and I think we're really lucky and we need to jump now because there is a paradigm shift going on. Um, from, from the dealings I've had now, again, to your point, um, Spencer, we haven't kind of said we're going to put a plastic cube in here, but I can't see that the board or the alumni or the students or the community would, would you know, I, I think our visions are so closely aligned anyway that they would rather see a building tweaked slightly and in use than, than frozen in time. So I think we actually have more ducks in the row than we realize we do. And I think that it's articulating vision is really fine. We just need to find that and then away we'll run. And we do take donations, by the way, talk to <laughs> You know, just just one other, uh, just and maybe layer you don't need, but need really on top of everything else. But as as you speak, it it reminds me of something. As an architect, um, <clears throat> um, we all went to schools of architecture. The schools of architecture were designed by architects, <clears throat> and we all had different experiences depending on where we went to architecture school. But the design of an architecture school is always a controversial act. And um, it's just inevitable. They get burned down, as happened at Yale, <laughs> even though it was concrete, I never understood that. <laughs> well, that's why it's still there, right? <laughs> Maybe, but uh, so just, just to say that it, there, the, the, the act of birthing a vision in, a, in, a, in an institution where a design is an element of the thinking is, is always gonna be kind of a, a learning experience, let's just say, but you know, so it's it's not meant to be easy, I guess. But well, maybe that's a good place to leave it off then for the next <laughs> next session. So thank you very much, gentlemen. <laughs>